Should I do the classic, like, YouTube address or thing? Like, <sighs> and then I turn on the camera. No, okay, let's skip that. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies, lasses, and lassos. Welcome to the click. You smell amazing today. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Excuse the mess. I'm in the process of upgrading my PC for streaming. Uh, I very much need to upgrade. I realize some of the pieces I have in it are, like, eight years old. So, yeah, time flies, doesn't it? Um, so I wasn't really planning on recording anything for a couple of days, but a situation came up that I couldn't really ignore, and I think it's time I talked about it. So this video is going to be a bit more scripted than usual, hence, while I'm reading here, yes, I can read, to stay on topic and be as concise as possible. My intention is that this is the last address of the situation. I've gone back and forth about how I wanted to make this video, and I think it's been a long time coming. I don't feel great about bringing drama to my main channel, as I know that's not what people are here for. For a little bit of context, I made a thread a few days ago outlining in rough detail why I left the old Sad Milk collaboration channel, partially to clarify that I wasn't associating with Illuminati anymore in more recent events and my reasoning for that. She kept getting into trouble and people kept asking me about it and kind of roping me into it. This blew up way more than what I intended and also made some other people come forward with their own stories, both in private and in public. The old Sad Milk members, old editors, ex-staff, you name it. And this whole thing blew up way more than I ever intended it to. Commentary channels picking it up, making stories, viral videos. It was, uh, it was interesting to see, for sure. A response video was made by her, which, among other things, dove into some pretty gnarly accusations about myself and presented a very dark picture about my morals, my discord, and how I run things in my community. I wrote out a few different scripts for this video, uh, some of them very long and extensive, but after some reflection I realized I don't want to drag this out. I'm not a drama channel and I don't work with hit pieces. My main grievance with Illuminati wasn't necessarily the behavior that made me leave. It's in the past and she lost many friends over it. I think I can let that speak for itself. My main grievance was her insistence to create new rumors and slander about myself, one topic and others after we left, and how she wouldn't leave us alone. This was super hard to address in any capacity as she rarely made the accusations directly, always talking through someone else's mouth or hyping up some young impressionable fan or associate to the point they would try to expose me or simply vague posting on Twitter with very suggestible timings. I will reference all of this later on in the video. Very easy for me and my colleagues to tell where all this was coming from, but really hard to actually prove to an outside audience, therefore almost impossible to defend yourself against. The talking points she tried so hard to sneakily spread for the longest time are actually the exact same talking points she brought up in her video. And I was also sent evidence of this by an ex-staff of hers that reached out to me during all this. So even though it was not my intention, my thread that ultimately led to her video pretty much baited out the fact that she was the one behind these claims and ideas all along. I also have full receipts for everything later on in the video. So I'm going to address her most grievous allegations factually and concisely with full receipts, context and any additional information that might be needed. Finally, after two and a half years, I get to set the record straight. Number one, the Discord situation. Content warning, mention of predatory behavior and adult topics. The situation brought up mentions a pedo joining my Discord. It is said that neither I nor my team took action against this predatory person and actively chose to do nothing to resolve the situation basically just letting them run amok. Click did not address it or wasn't fast enough, etc. Here are the DMs of said creep, full username, etc. that she has already showed in her video. Now the first detail that was conveniently left out of the accusations is that I was asleep. In my time zone this occurred around 2am and within the span of me sleeping this random creep in question had already gotten banned. I took the liberty to dig through the old ban logs on my server and here it is. He was banned at 2.14am, my time zone. She brought one topic into a chat room, as she shown in her video and her accusations. However, her statement in these DMs about click knowing is very odd, as I would have been very unconscious when the ban was happening. She might be referring to me knowing by the time I woke up, but the fact remains I wasn't there, nor did I endorse this random creep. Hey, I don't mean to bother you, but can we talk soon when you're free? I'm in a bit of a conundrum and I don't know what to do. Yeah, what's going down? Can I call? GF is getting ready for work. How sensitive is the topic? Very. It involves the P word. What is going on? In click server and click knowing. 19 year old and 12 year old combo public server, blah, 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 did nothing. And this was on the heels of clicks admin sending naughty stuff. And one topic says, hang on, I'll walk over to my mic. Okay, ready? Thank you, always. 
But as stated, a ban was already issued before I even woke up, about 14 hours before Blair brought this up with OT, if her timestamps are correct. So this was actually not a ban I was even personally involved with. It's also important to note that this is sadly the norm. Our server alone has 44,000 members and almost 3,000 bans. It is a well-known fact that Discord has real problems when it comes to exploitative individuals and communities using their platform. We as creators do our best to clean this up as well as the platform teams. Neither I nor my team condone this sort of exploitative behavior and do our best to address it when it comes to attention. This isn't a clicks Discord issue, it's a Discord issue. By the time I woke up, the staff spaces were in chaos. I assume she had asked her crossover staff to leave my server after the two teams clashed, fighting, tossing around odd allegations and blame. Keep in mind that the creep that joined the VC was already banned for many hours. And this is what I saw when I woke up in the morning. Tons of messages in staff chats, arguments, white names from people leaving. I tried to get an explanation to what had happened, and it took me a good few hours to dig through everything, talk to people, try to de-escalate and evaluate who had done wrong, and so on. The situation recap wasn't exactly presented to me on a silver platter. In the allegations against me, it is claimed that I didn't react or respond to the situation. Number one, being at sleep at 2 a.m. detail was completely left out. Two, the fact that he was actually banned before this whole thing was left out. And three, a receipt of Illuminati reaching out to me to get me to respond wasn't shown in her video or allegations. And the reason for this is that it doesn't exist. The person who reached out to resolve this was actually myself. And here are the DMs where I did so. Probably worth going to you too, as this thing seems to be blowing up. What have you seen of the recent events on the server? If we got time, I think a quick VC would be good, because this is going on the warpath, it seems. Warpath referring to the teams arguing and fighting, not actually the ban itself. As I said, that had been issued 16 hours before this conversation took place. One sec, I'm on a call with OT. Can I bring him in too? Sure, no problem. Here is a zip file, which is all the images that she showed in her video of the DMs with the creep, etc, etc. By the way, gonna talk to my admins in 15, that's when this person is back and can VC. Okay, I'm writing in the group DM right now. I will let you guys know when all actions have been carried out. I am proud of you. It sounds from this chat, starting from the time I was caught up on the night's events to the time after our voice call, that it worked out quite well. Of course, important to know that this conversation was also an outreach to resolve the Discord team's issue, not about the ban itself. To further clarify, the ban had been issued 16 hours before this conversation and before I ever woke up. And yes, it was later brought to my attention that there were a couple of mods who failed to act initially. This was evaluated by me and the team to take proper action. It's important to keep in mind that these people aren't trained law enforcement, but community volunteers. Myself and the admin team I work closely with do our best to resolve any situations that occur in the Discord. Also important to note that this screenshot from the group call that she brought up is simply OT not wanting some random creep statements in his work drive. <laughs> it's not that he was so torn up about my disgusting discord as is insinuated in the video for some reason. If OT was really so disgusted with me and how I run things, isn't it odd that we've been close friends for the two and a half years after this happened? It's a very odd thing to try to twist in her video. Of course, she would retell the story quite differently to anyone who would listen. Here's a screenshot where she's sharing that same group call and saying, This is that call where I railed click for not doing anything for months. Note that this date is in October, a couple of weeks after we had left Sad Milk. The statement about us leaving was made in November, but we had actually left a month prior. So the twisting of these events have been going on for quite a while. As for the staff member sharing inappropriate artwork in Discord, this happened about five weeks prior, so I'm not sure why it's being tied into all this, but I can say from experience with running Discord servers that it happens every few months that a staff member misbehaves and is removed from the team. Oftentimes, it leads to a couple of staff members getting removed, as troublemakers tend to enhance each other. This specific individual was removed from the team by me. The individual had been slowly spiraling, starting off with passive-aggressive behavior towards other staff and minor misdemeanors. When they failed to improve their behavior after a feedback session, and also got worse when they started sharing not safe work artwork in staff chats, they were removed. I think it's an important specification that it was lewd artwork and not real-life nudes. I actually talked to Illuminati one-on-one -on -one about this very thing. As you can see from this chat, this was already resolved a while back by that time. In the same conversation, we also talk about the out-of-context other screenshots she shared in her own video. It's odd if she wanted to paint a full picture of these events, she didn't include my own words on the matter, but just insinuations. Words she had access to this whole time. 
We did set up a rule set after the event occurred that the mod chat should live up to the same standards as the rest of the server rules, to avoid people getting carried away with their friends in mod chats. Furthermore, the individuals who partook were directly talked to and accepted that what they had shared wasn't server appropriate. I do also believe we demoded one of the instigators, who was a bit of a troublemaker, but it's, it's a long time ago, I don't recall the names. Again, this is a situation I personally addressed once it was brought to my attention. It sadly happens sometimes that people in your community do or say things that you yourself don't endorse or stand for. I think every creator can relate to that fact. I think it's about how you build your community in general, what values you endorse, and how you act when situations happen. Because situations will happen. And to be clear, the chats were cleaned out because I wanted to ensure the chats were as safe as possible. In retrospect, I do believe the situation escalated to the point it did, so she could replace my staff and have more control over my Discord and community. But it's hard to tell if it's intentional or a byproduct of just constant conflict escalation and nitpicking. And if you still don't believe me, you can check out my Discord yourself. It's linked in every description of my channel, and my staff and I do our best to make it as wholesome and supportive as possible. We have chill chat rooms, meme channels, a Minecraft community server, art contests, edits and fan art sharing, stream clips channels, you name it. It's just a good vibe. So I'm surprised it's being painted in such a dark way when it's right there. You can actually just go look. <laughs> nice, little, nice little Discord plug. Hashtag sponsored by my Discord. Heck yeah. Number two, click using abhorrent language. Uh, content warning, mention of slurs. I will be brief here, because there isn't really much substance. She claims I was tossing around slurs when gaming with friends. The only evidence she has in a group chat where she's talking to Adi Wazi, Uwu, among a few others. So it isn't an actual receipt of anything I did or said. It's not even a conversation I'm in. Uh, but just a few anonymous names venting in a group chat. However, to try to make sense of this, I actually asked Oz about this screenshot directly, and he had this to say. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the Arsler thing was about. I not only don't have any memories of it, but would only have to assume, based on my past actions, that I either A. Over-embellished to further feel accepted of the tone of one instance, never of course realizing the damage it would cause, I'm sorry about this if that is the case. B. Blair and I had discussions in relation to this and had created a behind-the-scenes narrative of what to say. This was also very common when we lived under the same roof. C. There was also watching how Blair would twist and omit truths to people. While I don't have any direct proof of this, I will say that watching Blair just say the right amount of truth to people to get their praise and adoration may have swayed me to do the same. Edit, there's also a chance that you said this like way back in 2019. I think the language I used in the group chat was more to put distance between us, not great on my part. It would have to be one of those, or a mix, honestly, because I don't remember you saying it. Not saying it didn't happen, of course, but I don't have any memories of it. I'm sorry for the pain that comment cost, man. Apologies will never, of course, repair the actions that I have made, and when all this went down. I'm sure there is more shitty things I've done or said that, honestly, for the life of me, can't remember. As for Blair claiming you use abhorrent language just as the N-word, the only evidence she ever gave us was was, by her word, claiming that when the two of you are playing Dark Souls 3, you refer to enemies or shadows or ash as endlets, or something along the lines of that in December of 2019. This was not brought up until after Sad Milk Split. And to be clear, I don't hold a grudge about this against Oz in the least. I can't say for sure, but to me it looks like Oz was just being pushed to prove his loyalty in a way. I wish you all the best, man, and I hope you get to rebuild your channel or whatever you want to do with your life. Before we move on, I'm just gonna point out some funny hypocrisy. She said she would never be friends with someone that used that language. Yet she regularly played games with me as a friend during this time, where I allegedly kept on saying these things. Which one is it? I, I don't think you can have both. And to add an extra layer of transparency on my own behalf, I didn't actually know the art word could be considered derogatory up until maybe 2020. So it's possible I said it before that point, but I don't recall specifics. When people came to me around this time and told me they had had the word used against them simply for being neurodivergent, I was surprised, as that had not been the case around me when I grew up. But I personally stopped using it in my content, or for posts I read out, and also did my best to remove jokes containing the word in older content. Simply because I didn't want my community to get the wrong idea about the values I held. I personally don't find the world too outrageous and still hear it on a regular basis on YouTube or in the online world. But I did opt out of using it in my content after this was being brought up to me by my fans. Three, she regrets our friendship and regrets helping me fix my wrongful channel termination due to the events mentioned. Uh, content warning, it sucks to have your channel deleted. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, man. This is this, just this a punch under the belt, isn't it? <laughs> Why was this in the video? <laughs> to be clear, my channel was restored by the help of my network, which is a service I pay for. She might have tagged YouTube on Twitter or chatted with support, and I appreciate my friends who had my back throughout all this. I even thanked them 
in my return video, her included. Here it is. But the fact remains, she wasn't the one who saved my channel. If you want to get into specifics, Oz and Salty are the ones who networked me with this network initially. But the rest was done by myself and the network. We fought for three weeks over Christmas to get my channel back. Very odd high horse to try to climb on top of and claiming I should have lost my entire livelihood because of the events stated earlier in this video. Jeesh, man. On a happy note, here's a little celebration chat I had with my network rep after we got the channel back. Wee! Emojis! Woo! Number four, the Illuminati smear campaigns. Content warning, vulgar language, mentions of predatory behavior. These following screenshots are reflective of behavior I think we have all seen, that the community can and has attested to. Vague tweets happened, whether you were a former friend or a current one, so it was clear to anyone who had experienced this before. But it's the specific timing I would like to bring attention to. Here is Sad Milk posting on the 1st of November, 3.28 a.m. that Salty Click in OT will not be continuing the new journey with Sad Milk and we're leaving the channel. And here's a tweet from Illuminati saying, casual reminder, pedophilia is never a gray area. It is wrong. If someone you know won't take action, then they are complicit to the problem, and so on and so forth, and here are some of the threads. In isolation, there is nothing wrong with this statement. It's one that I obviously support. However, the timing certainly struck us and the community as odd. Immediately after announcing our departure from Sadmilk, within three hours, this statement was made by Illuminati and retweeted by Sadmilk. This, as anyone would know, started many rumors. Worth mentioning, she also pushed Wonder to release a hit piece video on myself and OT back in 2021. When Wonder left, she retracted her support by removing her comment under the video. Wonder has since then retracted the video and apologizes for the false insinuation it contained, and I hold no grudge against him. I wish him the best in telling his own story and living his best life. He's a sweet guy who got caught up with the wrong people. She deleted the Sadmill community tab after my Twitter thread, where I referenced her manipulation of comment sections and vague posting in order to spread rumors or manipulate the public image of us on the collab channel. So here's the deleted community tab, and the older screenshots I have from the community tab look like this. Better without click, and you can see there are multiple comments that ratio this. I mean, obviously the channel had a lot of my audience as crossover. And a couple hours later, oh my god, all the ratioing comments are just magically gone, so it looks like more people are hating on me than they actually are. Oh my god, how could that have happened? Oh, I guess we'll never know. I am worried I sense big drama, especially on Twitter. I didn't see the N-word in old videos, just saying. Oh, oh damn. It's a little bit of sass, isn't it? And to clarify, back when I was a teen, I said some stupid things I'm not particularly proud of. Things I no longer support. The statement she vaguely refers to was me quoting and referencing a movie clip I liked 12 years ago. And at the time, I didn't really understand the concept of who can quote a bad word in reference to American culture. I am sorry about those statements, and I apologize to anyone who feels affected. I do not stand by it. I never intended any harm. I was trying and failing quite miserably to be funny. And to be honest, it actually feels good to talk about it, because she's held this over my head for two years. As people have started reaching out to me and other ex-members from Sadmilk, I now for the first time have gotten a proper look into the other side of this, and my suspicions of her being behind these rumors and smear campaigns is now confirmed. All these screenshots take place after we have left Sadmilk. We left in early October and she posted about us leaving in early November. Here she is, hyping up people who simply got banned from, in this case, One Topic's Discord. They spend hours of their lives to help some YouTuber they love and look up to. The very least any content creator can do or should do is give the teams the respect they deserve. Mods have been the backbone of every YouTube community, and so on and so forth. Ah, this OT and click poo has me heated. These stupid fricks. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> How could you not care about the people who care about your community the most? How? I would uh, like to point out the hypocrisy here, that in regards to my own Discord, she has been constantly suggesting me not being harsh enough. But when a staff member actually is kicked for breaking rules, she does this? <laughs> All right. Here she is, twisting the facts about the VC she had with OT around the time the pedo was banned around 2 a.m. Note that the dates mean that she has been spinning this twisted narrative of what actually happened for a very long time. About two and a half years. Here she is, still harping on the same Discord situations yet again. Venting about it in some group DM. This is all after I had left Sadmilk. Venting and nitpicking my wording in a DM. At this point, the argument isn't even if the situation was resolved or not. And to clarify, yes, I do think there is a distinct difference between personally targeting a minor with nudes or extorting them for nudes versus posting some random lewd artwork from Twitter in an inappropriate chat room. Both are bad, but they are not in the same ballpark. Me clarifying that is a very odd thing to nitpick and vent about. 
Here is the same chat room again, twisting a joke from a collab video from myself and OT. Trigger warning, pedo stuff. We were watching an old video from OT and Click last night, and part of a discussion, they were discussing OT memes, and they made a driver of the free candy van joke. Holy poo! What the frick? Ah, oh, re really? A, a white van joke is your banger evidence? I mean, as if the Discord stuff wasn't already misinterpreted and overhyped enough. But what is this? <laughs> are, you are you serious? <laughs> Here's the same chat room again, in what I'm assuming is suggesting that my Oh my god, I'm so down with the kids boomer joke from Twitter has pedo implications. Oh, the younglings think I'm so cool. Mm. Mm. Oh my god, if, if, if straws were growing on straws, this would be the straws that were being grasped at, man. What the hell? Here she is, leaking and nitpicking a message from me to my staff, proving that she did indeed have insiders in my mod team after she and I had parted ways and the crossover staff had officially left. She says, yikes, and here is me saying that, oh yeah, you noticed the staff has left again. Basically what happened is that OT and I left Sad Milk, it was becoming an increasingly tense environment with the group, and at the end of the day we had no real option but to take a step back. With that change, not surprising that the staff from Sad Milk was asked to leave, and I hold no grudge over it. The positive side to this is we will have more freedom within our own ranks to form this place as we want it to be without too much influence from outside parties. Paired with that, I will now have more time on my hands and I can help with day-to-day -day tasks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in staff chats or DMs. I apologize for this rocky road, and I hope it will be easier in the near future. I will also book yet another meeting, Lamau, in the near future. Love y'all. He just lied to his staff about what really happened. What, I just said that people left? They, they did, though. They weren't asked to leave. Oh, wait, I read that wrong, but he's pinning it on me. I don't, I don't, what are, why are you spying on my Discord, man? She's just spying on private conversation I'm having with my, like, seven mods. Nitpicking specific wording. Yeah, I said she told her staff to leave because her staff left in the middle of the night without explanation. Nobody told me anything else. What exactly should I have assumed? All I had was this, when I specified to the staff that they were still friends. I want to let you know that one topic and I are leaving is Milk. There's no bad blood, but the project is moving in a direction I simply cannot follow. I know this might cause some conflicting interest for the staff that are both here and in Sad Milk, and if you want to talk about it, I'm always open. In my book, you're welcome, independent of what projects are happening. And they're saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna stay here, I'm your friend, blah blah blah. But when I took the screenshots, the names were already white. They left in the middle of the night. And the only context I had to this was a random piece of a no mic VC chat that read like this. What the, of course, I'm just confused. Understandable, has everyone left click already? Okay, I'm gone. Team Blair all the way. F those dudes, of course not. The click is gonna be interesting from now on. Good luck with that. It's gonna be interesting. Any coffee for this click was my original home, but still F him. So I don't know exactly what was said about me, but I suppose her telling her mods how horrible I was, just as was done in her video, isn't technically asking them to leave, I guess. It's probably worse. Going back to the rumor machine, here's the same chat room again. Digging through my very oldest content, looking for dirt. Let's play Minecraft with Crazy Part 2. <laughs> Minecraft Alpha 1.2.6. Ah! The, the R word is here. Minecraft Alpha 1.2.6. Jesus Christ. I was, a, I was a high schooler in like 2010 playing Minecraft for my like 12 followers. Oh... And here's the chat that keeps going. Ever since she made some announcements, some fans are putting it together. While I am mostly the big bad bish, some are figuring it out. Listen, I have click on video saying the F slur and R slur. He will put himself up with his own ego like I won't have to do anything of that. He's gonna muddy his own hands and unravel it himself. Oh yeah, it's in his old videos. They are still live on his channel. Wh Hobbies are a good way to spend your time. What the hell? And this is her just hyping people up to be more hateful towards me because of my old bad jokes when I was a teenager. So much for this just happening to come out when I left Sad Milk. This, to me, looks like a very planned smear campaign and she had a very big hand in it. Here is her talking again. I'm a level with y'all here, reading through the things and seeing this person in the chat excusing click saying the R slur because it was 10 years ago and it's irrelevant as super yikes to me. Again, I'm the same age as click and that word wasn't even in my vocabulary, not 10 years ago, not now, because it was never appropriate. Uh, uh. And here is the same chat keeping going, digging through even more of it. It's like, oh, here's another video where there was a bad word. It turns out even the random allegations against mine and OT's podcast we had to address last summer originated from this group.
With the same people involved hyping up the person making the allegations both publicly and privately, at least according to people that have come forward to me. So based on what I have seen, she along with some staff and others would sit in this chat and just hype up each other's hatred for us, grasping at straws. And if this wasn't enough, here's a former staff member of hers getting paid to sift through raw audio recordings of me looking for dirt, more specifically the R word. I needed to work with this person to help me find clicks saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I can do that, just let me grab a shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video, but can't remember which one, and she's over her head. I'll pay you $200 to find it, and here's the payment. I mean, there's just, just an example, I'm sure there's more, which I don't have a problem with the word R, but she does for some reason, even though she uses it in private. <laughs> oh my god, is this, is this like serious drama at this point? It's like, am I supposed to take this seriously, man? <laughs> And to be honest, I don't care if she uses the R word behind closed doors, but also to be this up in arms about it when others do it, that's just like rampant hypocrisy, man. Come on. She actually paid people to dig up dirt and run smear campaigns on ex-colleagues, specifically snooping through my oldest content, years of decade-old content, and compiling it. I was like in high school and still learning English, playing Minecraft Alpha. Are you... Oh my god. Some... Rounding off thoughts, if she genuinely was so concerned about me being harmful, why did she never do anything? If she genuinely believed children were being harmed in my Discord, or I was a rampant racist, a homophobe, ableist, why was the best thing she could do is start rumors, vent in Discord, and vague post on Twitter? Why would she do this? When I left, I wrote out a pleasant exit message detailing I still considered everyone friends. In our last DM together, I wished her the best. Why? Why would she go through all this trouble, even spend money just to try to ruin myself and others? Why would she do all of this to someone who considered her a friend? Well, hello there. It's Click from the Future here. I was just finishing editing this video where I got a few more things from um, ex-staff of hers and other people that have burned that bridge. The first couple screenshots is from one of her ex-admins showing that they did indeed reach out to me about the issues in the Discord and here is me confirming that I did indeed address it. Um, here is that same person talking to Blair about uh, the information in the Discord claiming that I did indeed take action when their information reached me. So that's all well and good. There is a second story basically confirming my innocence and that I'm not a horrific uh, Discord owner. But uh, what has me a bit surprised is the next few screenshots. Here is Illuminati having a conversation with the same admin, sharing the same kind of, you know, dirt digging old videos that we've seen previously in this video. And she says, 16 seconds, the alt account is gonna love this. In the next screenshot, you can see her writing out a draft. I saw in the Sad Milk announcement of all the milkmen, now I'm seeing the comments. We all agree it's obviously not on good terms. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, etc, etc. This draft matches with one of the posts made by an alt account called Doobie Schmertz on Reddit. And this is the entirety of the post. This is the truth about Sad Milk. It really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back one topic, leaving his supporter server and then so on and so forth. And I was a big fan of the click. I thought his streams were great, blah, blah, blah. But then I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream where he watched some of his old videos. So this is actually Blair on an alt account making the claims that Blair must have seen some of his old videos randomly. She totally wasn't paying people to dig up dirt. This is her on an alt account, spreading misinformation and trying to enhance her own image. Here's another little funny post from the same account where she forgot to switch accounts and interacting with the Animal Crossing subreddit, um, at least according to Oz. Here it keeps going. Hey, listen, Blair, I'm putting this all together. What kind of cover-up is this? Click was saying these bad things. Creative differences. Click is a liar. And not to reclaim some one topic as friends with someone while pretending to be wholesome and good. This is all Blair replying to her own announcement under an alt account. And it keeps going. Click said the N-word and replies and claiming I'm not going to reply and I'm horrible. Here is a long post. I'm not gonna... You can pause it if you want to read the whole thing. I I don't want to. 
Here is the same account, Dubishmerz, on Twitter. This was an account I remember distinctly from 2020, 2021, that was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat, you name it. You name it. At the time, I wrote it off as a disgruntled troll with a little bit too much time on their hands and tried my best to ignore it. This was Blair all along. She was making alt accounts to spread her stuff because she probably knows deep down inside that the stuff she was digging up on me and all the stuff she was doing was so petty that she could never actually make a public statement of it. So she did this just to get back at an ex-colleague. She did this. She paid people to dig up dirt, make alt accounts, harass me for months. Why? Why? And it keeps going. Here it is on Twitter, tagging me, tagging her, herself. Here it's tagging Deaf Noodles. Here it's tagging Midnight Palma, Damien. It's tagging a bunch of people from the community and Salty. It's tagging Amanda the Jedi. We had her on the guest on the podcast and you come after Amanda the Jedi? Here's Vamps getting the same posts. Here are arguing with a bunch of fans. Here's one topic with his wholesome the Halloween special. Oh, do be schmertz. Right there. Well, isn't that just wholesome and sweet? Here's Anne Mine with a cute artwork about myself, OT and Salty. And yep, yeah, Illuminati's right there with their alt account. Posting this slanderous video that she edited together, collecting all the worst things she deemed from stuff I said when I was barely of legal age. And it keeps going. Here it keeps tagging one topic. Here it's tagging Blair again. It goes on. It keeps going. This isn't some small YouTuber beef. This isn't people being angry at each other because, ooh, someone did a bit more work in a project or not. I... I'm, I need a break, man. I need a break. I'll add this part to the video and I'll let the rest of the video play out as it was originally. Chapter 5. Some other comments. Uh, content warning, self-harm and depression. Her video goes into a few more topics, how she wasn't paid, even though her own screenshot shows me resolving the payment after I had issues with the credit card, along with offering to help out further. And also some out-of-context schedules, which I have no idea when the screenshot is taken or of exactly what. I have no real interest in addressing it, to be honest. It's just he said, she said stuff, and I think I've shown enough in this video to clear my name and show that she has consistently presented half-truths and twisting events to the worst possible interpretation. My intention is that this is my last address of this situation. But I would like to quickly comment on other parts of the video. What she did to Wonder is the most gross expose I have ever seen. Not only does she openly share his potential suicide note, she also shares images and talking points suggesting this man is at the end of his rope. Kicking downwards is an understatement. Some people are commenting how she bought a nice car and leased to him and gave him a job. And I would like to point out that this in of itself is quite charitable. However, it comes with the cost of full control of his life. She is not just his friend, but his landlord, car leaser and boss. Any conversation or disagreement would be very far from a peer-to-peer -peer interaction. And if she really wanted to help a friend who needed a car, why not just buy a used one and write over ownership of it? It's cheaper, less dependent, and aware doesn't matter. The whole thing seems very fishy to me, but I will let Wonder speak for himself. She also dodged Oz's entire statement, which, yeah, I'll let him tell his side of the things too. My only personal wish is that she just stops. Stop obsessing over people in Discord. Stop trying to spin a narrative or dig up dirt just because someone left your collaboration channel. We just want to be left alone. Finally, I would like to thank my community for being respectful and patient, both towards myself and others throughout this whole ordeal. And I'm looking forward to getting back to business as usual and posting my silly videos and streaming video games. And as a small side note, uh, just to address potential comments that might come up, yes, this video is monetized to ensure it's not throttled by YouTube, because I actually want people to see it. Now, I am gonna go get drunk, and I'm gonna touch grass. Take care, and have a great rest of your day. Mwah.